Hi and welcome to Melel. My name is Eyal and in this video I'll show you how to do basic editing operations with Melel. How to select text, how to insert text and how to move text around. If you're watching this you're probably new to Melel, but you may have experience with other word processors and be familiar with some of the concepts and operations we'll describe next. But we won't assume any prior word processing knowledge in this video and start from the very beginning. Here's a blank Melel document. The blinking line you see here is called the insertion point. The insertion point indicates the location where the next thing we insert will appear. If we type a letter on the keyboard, it will show up at the insertion point and the insertion point will move after it. We can continue typing in this fashion and the insertion point continues to move. Pressing backspace deletes the last character before the insertion point. And then you can type something else. The mouse pointer turns into an eye shape when above the text. When we click, it moves the insertion point to the click location where we can type some more. We can also make a selection by clicking and holding the mouse button at the beginning of the desired selection, dragging it to the end of the desired selection, and letting go of the mouse button. If we type now, the selection will be deleted and replaced with what we type. We can also just delete the selected text by pressing the backspace or delete key. If you click while holding the shift key, the selection will be extended from the current insertion point or selection to the clicked location. This is useful when you want to select more than one page of text. Click at the beginning of the desired selection, scroll to the end of the desired selection, and while holding the shift key, click the mouse button again. Double click to select a word. If you hold the mouse button after the second click and drag, the selection will extend word by word and not character by character. Triple click to select the paragraph. Triple click and hold to extend the selection paragraph by paragraph. You can move the insertion point using the arrow keys on the keyboard. You can move to the right, left, up or down. If you hold the shift key while pressing the arrow keys, a selection is made. If you hold the option key, also called the alt key, while pressing the right or left arrow, the insertion point jumps to the next word. Holding the shift key in addition to the option key will extend the selection word by word. Finally, you can use the command key with the arrow keys to move the selection to the beginning or end of the line, and you can combine that with the shift key to extend the selection. The most common way to insert text is using the keyboard. Each key on the keyboard produces a letter or a symbol. You can use the shift and option keys to modify the key function. For example, Pressing this key produces a lowercase g. But pressing the same key while also holding the shift key produces an uppercase g. And if you hold the option key while pressing this key, the copyright symbol is generated. While producing a lowercase or uppercase g from a key that is labeled with a g is obvious, producing the copyright symbol by typing option g is not obvious at all. The keyboard contains many such hidden treasures and you are not expected to memorize them all. Instead, you can use the keyboard viewer to see what each key produces when you press modifier keys like Shift and Option. Open the input menu and choose Show Keyboard Viewer. The on-screen keyboard shows us which character or symbol each key will produce. You can resize the keyboard window in order to better see the keys. If you press the shift key on the real keyboard now, 
The keyboard display will change to reflect which character or symbol each key press will produce. When you press the Option key, a variety of other symbols will appear. Let's say I wish to know how to type the Pi symbol. I'll press Shift and look for it. It's not there. Let's press Option and look. Here it is. Now, while still looking at the Pi symbol, I'll release the Option key. I can see that it is on the P key. So now I know that pressing Option and P will produce the Pi symbol. Of course, you don't need to bring up the keyboard viewer every time you want to type. The idea here is that you use the keyboard viewer as a quick reference guide to the keyboard. With some keys, pressing and holding the key will bring up a little menu with related letters. For example, if I press and hold the U key, this menu will pop up. I can click with the mouse to select the desired character. But I can also type the corresponding number, so I can press 2 here to insert a U with an umlaut. If you need to insert a letter or symbol that is not available in the keyboard, you can use the Character Viewer panel. Choose Edit, Emoji and Symbols to see the panel. By default, this panel is configured for inserting emojis, but you can configure it so that it gives you access to any imaginable character. Click this panel icon at the top right to turn it into a floating window. Pick a category on the left and you'll see the characters in the category. Double click a character to insert it. Characters you insert are added to the frequently used category at the top. You can also create a favorites list by clicking add to favorites. You can add categories to the list by clicking on this pop-up menu and choosing Customize List. Here we can add and remove items to the list to make it suit our needs better. I'll scroll to the European Alphabet Scripts section. And let's check Greek. Click Done and Greek is added to the list. Now I can pick my letter and double click it to insert it to the text. Let's say I want to move this line to the end of the text. I can select it and choose Edit, Cut. This removes the text from the document and places it inside a special memory called the clipboard. Now I'll place the insertion point where I want the text to move and choose Edit, Paste. The text in the clipboard is inserted at the insertion point. I can also duplicate text. First, I select the text and then I choose Edit Copy. This copies the text to the clipboard without removing it from the document. I can now place the insertion point somewhere else and choose Edit Paste. The text in the clipboard is inserted at the insertion point. You don't have to use the menu to issue these commands. You can use keyboard shortcuts. Keyboard shortcuts for menu commands usually use the command key. For example, the keyboard shortcut for copy is command C. You don't need to memorize the shortcuts. The menu shows you the keyboard shortcuts for each command. Open the edit menu and look at the copy item, and you'll notice that the shortcut is indicated next to the command name. You can see the shortcuts for the other commands as well. If you make a mistake, you can undo it. For example, I'll select this word and delete it. Now, if I want to reverse this operation, I can choose Edit, Undo. Of course, just like with other editing commands, the Undo command has a keyboard shortcut, and we can refer to the menu to look it up. You can also undo the Undo, that is, Redo. This will repeat the operation you've just undone. Choose Edit, Redo to redo the operation. That's it for this Melel video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.